Um, you, you've given the market an update here on the impact of the Berlin fire. I, I, we can take it then pretty much uh, very low at this stage. You don't see any meaningful impact on production or sales. Yeah, that's correct. I mean, uh, of course, uh, we started off the year with a scare. You know, nobody wants a fire in their factories. Uh, but uh, pretty quickly, and I think you know, I mean, it's just an enormous effort of our, of our ASML Berlin people and a lot of creativity. Uh, we don't expect an impact on what, our, what we call our mature products. And I think there was a production impact on um, uh, some of the modules which go into our most, uh, um, uh, uh, most advanced products. But uh, with that creativity and a lot of work, we think uh, the impact on our shipment plan for these EUV products, a very advanced product, is going to be uh, insignificant uh, in this year. That's what we currently expect. Peter, can I ask you about trade tensions? There was a report last year that the Chinese wanted your technology. The Biden administration put pressure on the Dutch government to say no. What do you make of the, the trade tensions that we're witnessing uh, throughout uh, 2022 so far? Yeah, I don't know. I think uh, we'll just have to wait. I mean, uh, the one thing is, is, is obvious, you know. I, I, I always tell people, you know, uh, 1973 revisited. In 1973, we had the oil crisis. Oil was always a given, and, and suddenly it wasn't there. 2021, semiconductors were always a given until they weren't there. So suddenly they, they turn into something geopolitical. And I think and it is what it is, the geopolitical. I'm a businessman. I'm not a politician. So I think, uh, uh, you know, I cannot, you know, I would, I would love to, sh to ship our tools to all our, to all our customers, but, you know, there are rules and regulations and we'll just uh, have to live by them and uh, we just have to wait until they come to a conclusion and hopefully it's going to be a positive one for us. Peter, as you say, you're a businessman. Um, terrific margin line here. Um, but uh, if, if demand is more than you can keep up with, why not just keep increasing the prices until it stabilizes? Yeah, I think that, that, that would be a kind of a, a, a normal reaction of uh, people. One, I think we have long-term agreements with our customers. Um, we are, in many areas, the only one uh, being able to supply this technology. Uh, we will not, uh, uh, let's say, uh, 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 act irresponsibly towards our customers. I mean, we have long-term agreements. Prices have been set for the next generation chips. As you pointed out, um, we are not deprived of good margins. Uh, so I think uh, we have a sense of responsibility together with our customers to make sure that we can supply the industry with sufficient chips so that the, so that the chip shortages that we're experiencing today do not affect anymore the, the car manufacturers, the industry, uh, and basically us as uh, consumers. You know, try to get a PlayStation 5, you know, and you will, you'll know what I'm, what I'm you know, talking about these days. Hi, I'm Giovanna Bersacci, and thank you for watching. You can check out more of our videos by clicking on the boxes on the screen. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more from CNBC International. Thank you for watching.